put your hands together and give a warm welcome to your host, Israel Vasquatelli. Thank you. So obviously my name is Israel Vasquatelli and I'm the department chair, a department chair with the entertainment and music business program here at Full Sail University. And I will be hosting this panel with my amazing panelists on artist development. So first and foremost, I wanna introduce our panelists. Uh, directly to the right of me, I have the amazing Ross Laura, founder of Archipelago Entertainment, amazing producer and also entrepreneur. Give it up. Thank you. thank you. Thank you for having me. And we have Ashish Manchanda, 2015 inductee to the Full Sail Hall of Fame, also an entrepreneur, producer extraordinaire, and founder of Flying Carpet Productions. Give it up. And one of my favorite people, this gentleman here is the director of a &R Research at Atlantic Records. He's a EB or MB grad, and his name is Chris Marchinago. Please give it up. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> I gotta say y'all, because I live in Nashville now. <laughs> so I love to dig into artist development, but first and foremost, I would like to see if our panelists would be kind enough to just walk us in their footsteps as they move from graduating and into their current path in the industry. So if you don't mind giving us kind of a quick synopsis of how you got to where you are now. So let's go ahead and start at the end. Man, so I graduated in 2013. A lot of my favorite teachers are in the room right now, which is awesome, and I got to see them throughout the day, and some of my friends that I made while I was here, they're here right now. Um, so while I was here, I started an internship with a guy named Steve Robertson, Steve-O, as he prefers to be called. He calls me Yago now, just because he thinks everything should end with an O and be like four or five letters long, as far as names. Um, so I started here, um, first record I worked on with him was the Paramore album, which had the song Ain't It Fun, which was a number two top 40 single. And then from there, um, I learned a ton just assisting him and then moving into more of a full on research role about full time about two to three years ago. And from there, it's just been a process of finding artists for the company based off of data and helping the company make better informed signing decisions. And I do that now out of Nashville as of a little over a year and a half ago. But I still, uh, still love Orlando. I went to Taco Chino like the other day and I was like, yes, <laughs> nothing better. So I think, did I, did I get all the way to the end of the journey? I think we're good. And then I now I'm good. here. We're good. We got you. to where we are now, so we're yes. good. Yes, awesome. All right, Ashish? Well, it started out uh, as a recording engineer uh, worked my way through. I wanted to set up a production company and a media house at some point. So uh, got the technical side out of the way. At the same time, I was also pursuing film studies on the side, on the sly, because I love movies. And uh, uh, did some uh, bit of personal entertainment law studies uh, to prepare as an entrepreneur. So went from there, music production. Uh, we set up a company, my wife and I where we have a uh, talent management wing, we have our own studios and a record label. We have about 10 artists that we've signed up with us now. Um, we have our own festivals that we do now. And uh, so the journey has been from technical to creative. Well, I should say, I've, uh, we used to have a band and we used to write our own songs first, but India at that time wasn't the best place to come up with original music. It was still a place known for covers or you had to be associated with the movie industry, which we didn't want to be a part of at that time. But then I went back to India to set up the company, and now we are ready to come back to the US and uh, yeah, develop the model that we have. So there's a lot of artist management happening. There's a lot of records being made. So we work on movies and uh, designing our own festivals. So it's nice. been a colorful journey. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Ross? Um, my name is Ross Lara, and uh, I graduated from Full Sail in December 2009. 
a recording arts degree, and uh, just super envious and um, excited for all of you here in this room because you guys are brushing shoulders among a lot of great people and have a lot of opportunities that the school is going to give you. So first and foremost, just really stoked for all of you guys. Um, after college, I went to LA, and I got to work with uh, a plethora of different artists and writers and DJs, producers uh, for the EDM markets in Europe and here in America. Um, started brushing shoulders with uh, great opportunities with um, music and mixing and sound design. Um, after LA, I wanted to get a change of pace and move to Atlanta. And I got to, uh, still to this day, get to work with our dear friend and uh, full sale friend, Phil Tan, on mixing production artist development projects. Um, and from there, I had a trip to South America and to the Galapagos Islands. And at that point, about three years ago next month, uh, I called up my business partner, Brian, who is a best friend since high school, and said, hey, man, do you want to start a company? And the company is called Archipelago Entertainment. And we combined the common denominators between adventure, technology, and music. And that uh, spirals off into music management, uh, label services, uh, production services, sound design, music education, and a bunch of other cool stuff that integrates the outdoors and extreme sports. So yeah, that's kind of my story in a nutshell. Awesome, thank you so much, appreciate that. So, so we're gonna talk about artist development, which I think to different people means different things. I think many times it's all about your perspective, you know, what part of the industry you're in. And I think the awesome thing about our panelists today is that they kind of represent different facets of the business. So I would love to kind of have whoever's interested in chiming in first, talk a little bit about your idea, your definition for artist development. What is artist Anybody development? Go no -nose goes. <laughs> ahead. Do that. You got it. OK. I thought we were playing no-nose goes, but whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> I misunderstood. Um, so the answer is, or the question is, what, what is, is your definition, definition of artist, artist development? development? Yeah. Um, well, it definitely means different things for every artist, but it's really just about identifying strengths and weaknesses in an artist, and then building, um, you know, building a team or finding ways to um, help them where they're weak, and um, you know, and make use of where they're strongest. So. I think it's like sometimes an artist comes to the table a great producer, but they might not be able to know how to write a lyric, and it's about pairing them with the right lyricists and whatever, and then um, or the opposite way around. So it's all really just based on strengths and weaknesses. And um, at Atlantic, that's what I'm doing every day, is making sure that the artists that are on our current roster are being able to be paired with people so that they can create the best music that they can possibly create. Thanks. So cool for us. What we're looking at, of course, uh, it's all of that, and is getting the artists ready to be in front of audiences. So and uh, uh, prepare them for the universe that exists outside the creation process. You know where you're going to be seen on on television. You're going to be seen on uh, digital, whether it's on uh, some place like YouTube. Um, so basically, it's all about uh, preparing uh, the talent for uh, wherever they are going to be seen and heard now. So that, uh, so of course, there's songwriting. There's how to handle yourself. So we say, it, I mean, this sounds crude, but uh, it's like you're born with talent, but superstars almost have to be manufactured. So there are a lot of people who are talented, but there are very few who will make it because uh, there is a system that has been developed over the decades, and different artists need different uh, approaches. Some are just born superstars, so you have to work with them differently. So you cannot have a one model source all. You have to customize it and know and understand the talent and how they're going to be positioned, which should be best for them and for their audiences. So. Uh, well said by both of you guys. And just to echo all of those points, uh, putting the emphasis on teamwork. Uh, you can have an artist, whether they have a God-given gift or it's somebody who needs a little bit more curating <coughs> development and, and uh, nourishment on all different avenues. I mean, it's you can do it alone, but it sure helps to have a great team around you. Um, having the writers and producers, the engineers to reinforce the creative side. Um, some of our uh, ventures with our artists that signed to our company, we've even done interview coaching and having a guy who just loves to talk and having extensive, elaborate dialogues just so they're comfortable on camera eventually when they 
are doing interviews and podcasts and all that good stuff. Um, I mean, even beyond all the creative and communication stuff, there's A and R's. There are label executives. There are uh, fashion people in the fashion world. Fashion and video play a big role in artist development. So um, just putting together the right people and being selective, being open-minded, and uh, finding people that could also uh, teach you something. Uh, a great point that my business partner brought up with me one day. He says, Ross, uh, when you're selecting your team, ask yourself if they can teach you something, if they're an expert at one thing that they're really good at. Those are the people you want to surround yourself with and also be part of the village to help raise the artists. So I think teamwork is super crucial. And um, personally, I, and I'm sure these, these gentlemen could agree with me that they couldn't do it without the people around them and the teamwork. So that's really important. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love to learn a little bit about assembling that team because artist development in many ways, it's about combining different expertise and being able to tap those expertise to refine the product, which is the artist. And I like to learn from each of your points of view, you know, what would you say is the best way to start assembling that team? Who do you know or how do you know who to work with and how to find these folks? So if you're an artist or maybe you work, you're a uh, manager working with an artist, how do you go about putting that team together? So I look at it like, uh, like a director who's about to make a movie. You need to cast people for every role. You know? So you need a kick-ass team. So you need specialists for every department. Also for some artists, you know, uh, some may be fantastic songwriters themselves, so they need attention somewhere else. So what we say, I mean, uh, for us, it's like if we've signed on somebody, it's like we are fan number one. So we are their fan already. Mm -hmm. Now we have to mm -hmm. make sure that the others feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay, And uh, I think the, the music and the entertainment industry is going through a reboot of sorts. So uh, having people being over prepared, I don't think uh, we've seen that people do not connect to that too. So one has to be careful about not going overboard. You know, So uh, it's, it has to be chiseled out with each one. So. Um, so there's no, uh, uh, we've seen, for each one we have to design a different strategy. You know, so if they're already good at something, we really don't need to, because their originality is what we were attracted to them in the first place. You know, so, and if you start changing that, then we change the DNA of what was likable in the first place. So the idea is yeah. to make them relevant and likable, you know, what works, so you don't touch it. You know, it's a very delicate line between, like there's a thin line between love and hate. So there's a thin line between, uh, I think, disturbing that, uh, that attribute. So uh, we have to carefully bring on, so if somebody wants to dance, then sure, you know, you'll, you'll uh, go out and get a good choreographer. But there are artists who don't dance, you know, and they're just very good on stage, just, they're just likable when they just stand on stage uh, like Dido. You know, she just Adele. stands on stage and that's it. That's good. Jeans and t-shirts are just fine. So you don't need to get into overt makeup and over, you know, over the top production. So with each one, their universe has got to be understood. And our job is to just take that in front of people so that they're likable. You know, that's why we like them in the first place. So like we say, we have the privilege of being fan number one. You know, that's how we look at it. It's going to be point. hard for me to add anything to that because, I mean, I think that's a big mistake that a lot of people make right away is that taking the thing that's already working or the thing that's already great about that artist and trying to turn it on its, you know, turn, t change it into something else rather than, you know, that's great and then what other, th what other exciting things are there about you because it's true we're professional fans at the end of the day. So, and I think if you're going to be on the artist's team, I mean, sometimes... You know, it, sometimes um, at like Atlantic, um, what will happen is if an A and R person leaves, sometimes an artist will end up on um, you know on my shoulders or one of the the, the newer A and Rs that have come in, and um, it's your job whether you are a massive fan of them or not to um, figure out what it is that the fans do like about that artist and um, help facilitate anything that they need for their career. So, I mean, that's the only thing I feel like I could, I could really add from my perspective to what you said, because that was so well done. 
And just to give myself a little refresh on the question is, what goes into choosing the team? Yeah, if you could provide maybe some insight into how to go about finding these folks. Uh, well, I think we could probably all agree in this room, it's a combination of the stars aligning, uh, being in the right place at the right time, yep. a little stroke of luck here or there. Mm -hmm. um, but there's definitely some questions and some things that uh, my business partner and I and the rest of our team look for. Um, a super simple, easy question to ask yourself is, or at least ask people in the beginning stages of getting to know these people, is like, what team sports did you play growing up as a kid? Were you part of a band? Were you part of a, a club of any sort? And the reason why, my business partner and I would ask those questions as it demonstrates if they've been part of teamwork environments in the past. And I think we could all agree in this room that um, the environments that you come from as a child into your teens, into your teens and into college, into a community teamwork environment like this, uh, being able to be a team player is super crucial. And the record making process, movies, whatever it is, it's all just you're, mm -hmm. you're just part of the process. You're just part of this pie. And you know, me as a producer, I have one small position in this long conveyor belt of, from a record being in the first stage of the creation all the way to distribution and it going to the masses. And there, there could be dozens and dozens of people involved on in that process. So I think just um, really tuning into your intuition and uh, basic psychology too could really help reinforce good decisions and uh, building your team and and we like to look at the teamwork standpoint of where they kind of came from and their past experiences Of course, there's exceptions to everything yep. somebody may not have been in a band or been on the football team growing up um, There's exceptions, but that's a good general r rule of thumb that I look at and that's been backed up by years and years of dealing with people uh, where some individuals can be super, super talented and provide value to our project, but they have no sense of communication time things of that nature. And I would almost rather take the punctuality and being professional with an average amount of talent. Um, so again, there's that's a great question and we can go on yeah. Yeah. for an hour about it, but yeah. And where to find those people? I like you know people that I have already worked with that I like, or sometimes it's like an artist, I'm like, man, their team is killing it. Like mm -hmm. who on their team could I hire like, because I want that kind, that same sort of like, there's a lot of similarities between what that they were able to accomplish mm -hmm. and what I want to accomplish. So as far as like that the actual practical application of like how I look for people, it's like just, you know, being a fan of other people's works too yeah. and like pointing out strengths where I see them in there and calling it out and being like, that person killed it in that. Yeah, and, and, and values and all that line up with that too. Uh, like our music company is fairly complex and we have different divisions like I was telling with you guys in the beginning. But if someone comes up to me and is like, man, I'm like really into hiking and adventure and making beats and I do the same things that you do, immediately like just synergistically, I'm feeling more connected and in more of a parallel line with that individual. Where then if somebody is gonna be scared out of their mind to go outside and do something with me to create music, that might not be the best fit. So yeah, yeah I think there's, there's common values and all that that you can look forward to in people and that's really, really important. Yeah, I think that's a great point because many times we kind of make decisions based on talent. Talent is always important but it's, it's kind of like the starting point, right? So there, there's a lot of folks that have talent, a lot of artists that have talent, but there has to be a lot more there. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that you all discussed value and the characteristics and you know, what you bring to the table, timeliness, et cetera, et cetera. Dedication's another thing. Um, speaking of that, I love to get your insight into maybe, you know, talent's a given, but what are some of the biggest missteps? And it doesn't have to be an artist misstep, it could be from the company, it could be from the management perspective. You know, we hear so much about success, right? This person was able to get a Grammy independently, you know, without ever working with a major label or selling music the traditional way, but that doesn't fit everyone, right? On the other hand, what we do see are a lot of folks making the same mistakes. So I would love to get your perspective on missteps. What are the common missteps that you might be able to help these fine folks with identifying so they don't make these mistakes, either as a professional or working with their ta or their talent, being the talent? Um, this is a great question. And my initial response is something 
uh, deeper rooted than just any steps. It's all in the very beginning, like why do you want to do this in the first place? And there's a great book out there that all of you should read called Start With Why. And it's a philosophy that all the most successful entrepreneurs and business people, creators in the world have started with. And I ask this question a lot to many, many people around the world. And with artists, they're like, well, because I love music. Well, everybody loves music. We all love music on this campus. But like, what really is your why? Do you want to raise awareness for animal, animal cruelty through your music or through your lyrics? Um, for, for us, it's the hybrid of adventure and music and technology and inspiring people to be the better versions of themselves with the outdoor stuff. You know, There's a long list of things for what a why answer might be. but. I think it's really important to identify the why. And it can never be about money. It can't be about fame or any of that. It needs to, about, needs to be about, you know, a, a, I, I can't even say what it needs to be about because everybody's going to have their own individual answer. But I think it really starts with why do you really want to do this in the first place? And me personally, I can't, I, I don't like hearing, well, because I love it. Now, that's important. You have to love what you do and you have to be passionate about it. But perhaps there needs to be something deeper rooted. And when you don't start with a good why and why you're doing this in the first place, it can just create a domino effect of why things don't go well. I know so many people, I'm sure the two gentlemen in the, uh, on this table with me and all of you can relate that we know a lot of very gifted and talented people, but so many of them only finish two songs a year because they are perfectionists and can't commit, or they just don't put certain things in their, in their lane of priority to make things happen. Um, so yeah, I think it really does start, I mean, it's such a generic response on my behalf, but I think it's so important. It's like, why do you really want to do this in the first That's place? That's a great point. And that will hopefully transpire into good things down I like the road. that. Nice, very nice. There you go. Man, I was just like listening to what you were saying. I'm like, why, why do I do any of this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and then, um, and then I, just, I just started like getting deeper into thought with all that. But no, a big misstep too is just like, you know, and I think you kind of alluded to this a little bit and that is that um, there's a lot of this like, and it makes sense to be inspired by other people's music and to like, um, in a lot of ways, um, imitate what's going on. But you know, like with, I think a lot of great music, and again, I'm gonna speak kind of directly from music because that's what I know. People, the best artists are the best at knowing like just who they are and themselves and really digging into that because that's the best asset that you have and it's hard enough for the average person who doesn't do music to figure out who they are, let alone to figure out who you are and then put it onto a stage or onto a recording and then show it to the world. It might be the same thing for a film, I would imagine, but... Um, that's the biggest thing is to like, and, uh, and I'm gonna, I keep using Chance the Rapper as like an example of a lot of things, but like the dude, you know, growing up in Chicago and also having, you know, a, a strong foundation in church and bringing this gospel thing that's very much a part of him to his music makes him stand out. And it's not being weird for the sake of being weird. It's just that's, he's the only one that can do that because he's the only person that's him. So it's just like digging into yourself and rather than looking at what everybody else is doing, it's great to be inspired by that and be like, oh, I see some of those elements in me. But it's like, you know, who am I and what do I have to say and how will I affect culture? So that's the biggest misstep for me is people just looking at other people and being like, man, I got to do what that person's doing. And that's fine. Uh, there's plenty of room for it, but I'm more interested in the ones that like everyone's imitating. And it goes hand in hand with the whole why thing. Yeah. yeah. So we look at something called uh, the FGF factor. It's the feel good factor. So uh, when somebody is performing, you got to feel good. They've got to feel good. So if you don't feel good, then it's not going to work for anybody. So um, for us, the top of the pyramid is, uh, we think it's a service to people. And it's a, we have to serve good feelings to people, or whatever feelings that one has to communicate. So it is, uh, so if you have to say we are in the business of feelings. So if, and you can, uh, you can arrive at those feelings uh, from different angles. You know, it's like, it's like a mountain and the mountain top. You can arrive over there from different sides, and there are different approaches. Uh, they could be different genres. There could be different trainings. But as long as you achieve uh, the correct feeling, it doesn't matter where you've come from and how you've come. So that's why you would have 
um, uh, people who are coming for you never heard of them and then suddenly they're everywhere and then there are people who've been under the developmental program for many years and they've come from there so it wouldn't matter because at the end of it the team has figured out it's all about feeling good you know and if that feeling can be addressed then I think uh, you know you made your mark yeah. so we look at uh, that what is it that will help uh, being feeling good and it being relevant to these times. So we've got to live in these times, what's trending now. Uh, you could push the times a little bit, but we have to live in the now. So it's about feeling good. And that can come from strange ways, strange techniques, uh, strange philosophies. There could be a lot of zen in it for somebody, for someone else. They could, it could be very... Um, it's like one size doesn't fit all. You know, So you have to customize... So, uh, like, uh, in the early days, like, we had a vocal trainer and five, six of our artists wanted to go in and uh, attend these vocal training classes, you know. So all of them went in, and at the end, there were just two who were left to do the classes. And the others kind of dropped out by themselves. And we, we left the option to them. And uh, so there may be techniques of doing and rendering, like, you know, vocals in a particular way. But there was this artist, and he has this uncanny way of singing. And that's his USP, you know. And had he gone through the whole vocal training program, we would have just messed that thing up. So the best thing is to pull out from something fast. So the mistake would be to have gone on just because, you know, you have set up. So like they say, there's, a, <laughs> there's the way of the Tao where the water will flow on its own and it will find its own way. So we have to be, as a team, the most important thing is to be sensitive and being very progressive and change fast where you need to. So that's what we've learned, you know, from our time. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The water will flow its own way. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I like that a lot. That's going to be the coolest thing I hear the the whole entire um, week, I think. But um, mm. another one thing I want to throw out there is that um, a big misstep is that a uh, label shouldn't be the goal. Like a label should be a part, could be a part of the equation for you. It might not be. Um, the goal should just be make something great and then deal with everything else after that. Um, I guess I'm speaking directly to artists who are independent or managers. It's like don't focus on getting it out there so quickly. Like you have time and just focus in on making something awesome because there's so much average in the world, that's the, literally the definition of it. It's I'd rather, and I said this in the last thing, is I'd rather hear something awful, and you work on that, because there's a business on the awful music, and there's business on the great music, but there's not really, there's a lot of this stuff in the middle that's just kind of like, to me, but I guess that's mm -hmm. also just talking specifically from uh, the company where I work. So that's um, a great point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's one thing uh, I'd like to add is that uh, there are times when we leave artists to themselves to come up with songs and like you said, you know, they might take like, uh, you know, two songs a year. We've kind of done away with that for the time being. In, in, the, our, uh, in our current situation, we have a deadline. You know, everybody works on a deadline and you have to meet the deadline no matter what. And that's in six months, that's brought the amount, that's brought about so many results that two years of every other type could not do, it were, and it was only setting a deadline. Mm -hmm. That if, if we have to have a record release on 1st March, it just has to release on 1st March, no matter what. If the song is not ready, the songwriters have to go back and get it ready. So it's, and other industries have become industries, and they succeed because there is a deadline, and there is an agenda, and that it has to be met. So if Apple is going to come out with new products every September, nothing's going to change that. You know, the company will go through too much of a change. It's similar for us. And I think uh, though uh, you cannot apply to everyone, I have seen that it works for most. You know, so uh, deadlines bring about reality. Uh, it's not pressure. I think it's, uh, I think some people have a fear that, you know, that we have to finish it by this time. Yeah. And we've seen <laughs> it's by overcoming fear. So the so deadlines have been great. <laughs> to get things going. So we've had like two or three releases uh, since we started our young little company for, uh, uh, for the label over the last like one and a half years. And in the last six months, we've had like seven, eight releases just because we decided that we're going to set deadlines. And mm -hmm. it works. I feel like video games should take an example from that. I've been waiting to play Kingdom Hearts 3 for like four years. <laughs> 
Like goals too. Uh, the deadlines and goals mm -hmm. play are they're like puzzle pieces. So mm -hmm. yeah, goal setting is really great too. And that's essentially a deadline. Yeah. It's like the Olympics. I mean, for the uh, for how you set up a team. Mm -hmm. It's just like setting up the Olympic team. So like you said, there'll be some artists who are just coming out with hits after hits after hits. People will find out, okay, who are, who's working with them? Who's the team? Who are the songwriters? Who's the product? Then everybody wants to gravitate towards them. You know, so it's just, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it doesn't have to sound horrible. But, you know, it's a game. Everything is in a way that uh, I think it helps the artists. It helps the fans. So one has to figure out ways to be quick and to get stuff out. And uh, these days, you actually do not need uh, that much time. If you're smart and you set up a good team, you can do things much faster than you could ever have done before. Mm -hmm. Because uh, at the end of the day, the performing artist is the front, actually, of the entire enterprise You know that is behind them. So the artist may or may not have written the songs themselves. It doesn't matter. You know, At the end of the day, they are the interface. Like for Whitney Houston, she never wrote a song at all. But did it matter to our fans or people? It doesn't matter. So one, we, we, we get into the, like what I call, we mix drinks. And it's a, it's a very strange cocktail which doesn't work. So there's no need to mix up uh, that the, the artist has to become a songwriter, has to become like a super producer, has to become everything themselves. The fun is if everyone can acknowledge their core skill sets. And if they're, uh, at the end of the day, the performing artist is the performing artist. So they have to be really good at performing. Mm -hmm. That is the first and the most important uh, job for them. Whether they write a song or not, for me, that's number two, three, four, it doesn't matter. As long as there's a team to service that, that's OK. So I think for each one in the team to understand their core skills and make peace with it, you know, then everybody wants to say, no, I, now I want to write my own songs, and now I want to do everything. And I think then that's when you start mixing drinks. So be honest with yourself, brutal with yourself, and that's what the team helps to do, is to identify early on, you know what, stay away from that, you don't need to write, or you're a great writer, you know, maybe you can collaborate with somebody. Uh, so it depends. But I think uh, being very honest with yourself, that, uh, that help, that's helped us a lot. That's awesome advice. That it is. Give it up. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I love to kind of take some of the things that I heard and formulate a new uh, concept for you to address. And that is, you know, you mentioned the label and a lot of artists goal was the label. That was where they wanted to be and they didn't think beyond that. Um, I heard a lot about, you know, setting goals in general and having a timeline, having a deadline. <clears throat> and at the same time, I think another piece of that puzzle is success. And success, you know, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago is not what success is today. Right? Once upon a time, the metrics were strictly sales for the most part and radio play, right? Today, there's so many different variables of success. So I would love to hear from each of you what artists should be doing instead of doing what most of them are trying to do, which is still get on a label. And two, how should they determine success? It's not going to be a platinum record anymore. So what is it? Man, I mean, it's, I guess it's defined, by, defined by your team. Like, um, a lot of times going in and having that conversation with the artists, like, at the same time of identifying, like, what they're, what they're good at and what they're not so great at is also, like, what is it that you want to achieve? Like, this is your company. And what is it like, where do you want this company to go? Do you want your company to be the biggest one in the world? Do you want to be the most respected artist in your genre? Do you just want to be the biggest artist in your town? Do you want to be like, do you want to make a lot of money on the road? You don't really care what your records do. You just want to tour and you want to tour a lot. Or you don't necessarily want to be big in the US. You want to do all your business in the UK and that's it. Or India or anywhere else. It's like there's different, the 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 way you develop your goals is identifying what it is at the other side of that river and then placing stones across it to get there and the, those stones change depending on where you're trying to go so um and i mean that that's the biggest thing for me so identifying like what are those metrics it's you know, it can it can be whatever lies in there sometimes it's shazams and being like if you want to be big in the uk like sales and streams and everything that you do and all of your your press efforts and everything else should be directed there 
versus, you know, and, um, but at the same time, I think from a business standpoint, you have to acknowledge sometimes when like, with things like Spotify and the music can go all places all at once in a way, or even, or just being on the internet in general, you start seeing a lot of people from Mexico city. You should have a conversation about it as a business and being like, is this something that I want to explore? But, you know, I think you get there first by identifying what it is that you want to do in the first place. And cause it's not going to be, be the biggest artist in the world every time. Most of the time it's not like you were saying before. So it's identifying what the goal is and then picking, uh, picking the stones to get there. Because successful is different for different people. Uh, like you said, you know, it's like you make your peace with what you've decided. <laughs> a few years back, I came across one saying, I think somebody wrote it down, and uh, success is something that eludes everyone. Success also is something that we do not understand at times. So this one phrase, it kind of summed it up for me. And uh, we share it with, uh, you know, people who work with us. So this, it goes like this. It says, success is the progressive realization of one's worthy ideals. So success is the progressive realization of one's worthy ideals. And that, that made so much sense to me because it was personalized for everybody mm -hmm. in one line. So my ideals would be different from your ideals, would be different from the artist's ideals, would be different from anyone else's ideals. So it is a generic but very specific statement. Mm -hmm. So you make your piece. And so if an artist and the company decide that this is the scale that you want to operate at, and if the artist and the talent are happy with that, that's successful. You know, It's just not that now you have a concert where there are 100,000 people. So you have a concert with 1,500 people of the people that you want to address, and the, and the talent is happy with that, and the company's happy with that, and it kind of works for everyone. That's successful. So success is relative. It is different for each one. And uh, one thing that we do early on uh, with the talent is the talent is made to understand uh, in whatever manner possible that this is the music business. This is not a hobby. You know. So there are a lot of people, and there's a lot at stake. So you're not here just to you know, out of the bedroom and into a little fancier place, there's a responsibility that comes when you go out as an artist. So you cannot be so casual or gung-ho about it. You have to understand. And I think it, it, it brings about better ethics, work ethos, and responsibility. So otherwise, artists are known to, you know, anything goes, anytime goes. Uh, and you know what, some of it is okay, it makes you who you are, but you cannot give and use that as a crutch for everything in your life. Yep. Because there, there are too many people who are responsible behind you to help you become who you become. So you, this is the music business. So if you want to be in the music business, these are some of the things that have to be taken care of. Then it's a business. Otherwise, then it's a, you're a hobbyist and then do it by yourself. Please do not take the whole cavalry with you and the village with you. you know, so. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think what Hashi said is, uh, I'm, it's hard to follow up after that. I would agree with everything he said. Who will speak? Yeah, uh, it was, yeah. I, I don't really have much else to add ex other than just focus on your health and well being, your happiness. Everybody has different um, gauges and different definitions for success. Uh, you go to some of the third world countries of the world and they have no money and they appear to be happier than yeah. anybody here in America. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, and they're sitting out there with their guitar, singing and right. playing for their cafes. And yeah. that's success to them. Yeah. So uh, just focus on being happy, healthy, and surround yourself with good people and you'll be okay. Indeed. And, and, and don't take somebody else's success as your own I think is also mm -hmm. important because yeah. I think so many times the industry in general is about wanting what this person has as opposed to I mean what you said I don't think anybody could have said better is to make it your own and I love that really nice um, yeah one more time <laughs> that was awesome <laughs> yeah, that's too much. that was awesome so I would like to and I know you all have a myriad of talents and skill sets clearly to do what you do and to be successful at it. I would like to go down the line and kind of 
uh, create or, or, or maybe hear from you somewhat of a case study specific to something that seemed to have stood out when I spoke to each one of you about your background and how you got to where you are. Um, mm -hmm. So for example, when, when and you told us what you do, Chris, you talked about the fact that obviously it is about data. So I would love to hear, and if you don't have a name that you could give us yeah. uh, for whatever reason, if there's some privacy concerns, if you could give us a case study, if you will, from your world where data helped save the day or data helped make this you know, the best success that you could have. Okay, well, I have a perfect example here. So aside, uh, all, on top of doing um, my re responsibilities at Atlantic and in the research department, um, I also manage an artist, just one. His name is Reggie Williams. He goes by R. Lum R. He's an alternative R&B artist. Um, and, but it wasn't always that way. He was in a, a singer-songwriter singing like John Mayer-esque style songs. And it was one of those things where when I started at Atlantic and I started looking at the numbers and just identifying what it was that was making all these people successful, again, it was they tapped into something that was their own and they were able to communicate and share this ideal with the community that they were trying to reach. And I would be with Reggie and he would be singing like just around the, the house or like when we're at a restaurant or something, he's always singing. And he was singing, you know, these, um, he was singing like George Benson and a lot of this like soul and a lot of, um, I noticed, I recognized a lot of R&B and I was like, I remember um, having this discussion with him. I was like, why don't you like sing any of this in your music? He's like, oh, I don't know, man, people just expect me to sing R&B music or whatever. and. I was like, but you like that music, right? He's like, yeah. And I was like, what are you listening to right now? And it was all things that he wasn't even like a part of. I was like, well, maybe, you know, that was kind of a, 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 I, like a light bulb moment for me as a manager in the artist development process being like, well, maybe we should give, you know, this thing a shot that's like, feels like it might be more you. And it's like, uh, it's coming from a place that just is natural for you. And so he did. And we started seeing a ton of success because suddenly the vehicle in which his lyrics, he's always been a great lyricist, but for some reason, when he kind of um, turned on the switch of like letting in all of this stuff that made him who he was, and then he exemplified that in his music, you know, it started being a ton of success. We just passed like 11 million streams like in less than like six months. Like just from, and that's like the power of being so good at being yourself. And um, he, I mean, and I, I recommend if you want, look, he's, he doesn't hide any of it. Reggie Williams music, you can find what it was. And then you look up R Lamar, R dot L U M dot R, and it will give you, kind, you'll see a lot of similarities between the two, but um, you'll also sense, like, I think a significant change in him as well. And that's just the artist development thing. The biggest part of it is time. And again, with goals and setting them and making actual like statements like, let's try this. You know, if, if something's not working, then don't be afraid of like trying something new and starting over because it's like, oh, well, you know, we had 3,000 fans on Facebook. And it's like, there's a lot of people in the world and you owe it to yourself as a creative and an artist. It's not about getting to everyone in the world, but like, don't be afraid to change just because you, you know, you started one thing. It's like, I think you should be open to the possibility that it could be better going a different way. So would you say that, that you were using the data to kind of guide? Yes. Okay. So it was one of those things where I recognized, um, I just, so as I was looking at the data, I was like, okay, well, you know, a lot of these new artists and in this specific space are, they're all coming, like there's a lot of the Spotify activity that's happening. Okay, well, what does this, what does that mean? I was like, okay, well, the activity is coming from playlists. I'm like, okay, well, were they on another playlist before they got to this one? And then it turns out there's seven or so people and they're genre specialists. And I was able to kind of like work backwards and then be like, okay, instead of hitting up everybody or some general Spotify thing, I'm like, there's a person who only deals with R&B music, that's it. And there's a person who deals only with electronic music and that's it. And there's a person who deals with hip hop and that's it, hip hop and rap, whatever. And um, it was, to me, those were three parts. I didn't reach out to the singer-songwriter. I didn't reach to the person who runs that. I didn't reach out to the person who runs rock. I didn't reach out to the other person. I used that to n focus in on who I should talk to about this music, who would be interested, who's a part of this community that wants to know my artist. And that's what I did. I reached out. It was actually um, the hip-hop guy. His name is Tuma. He's a really cool guy. And he reached back out, and he's like, this is amazing. 
you, Majima, you should check this out. And he like, even though I had already hit her up also just separately, I think that really started the conversation. And then it was just, you know, it was just about identifying who are the people who, through the research, identifying who are the people that um, are like the leaders of their community and how do I reach them so that they can let their followers know that this thing, you know, this is something you should pay attention to. Awesome. I and mean, that, that was super valuable to me as a manager. Nice, thank you. And um, I, I would love to find out a little bit about the the visual side of, of, of your business. I know that you have worked on all kinds of soundtracks and, and, and music that's been used in a plethora of films. And obviously, the visual is one of the most impactful mediums that we have today to not only help brand the artist, but also in many ways captivate an audience. I'd love to learn a little bit from your perspective how you've used the visual to enhance an artist's career or maybe you know, uh, build awareness for a particular movement or song. I think we are actually now coming to the point where we are going to engage the visual medium. You know, so far, uh, we have been working on uh, developing the music and getting the music right, and uh, because eventually people are going to listen to the music, and that's where the fan base is made. The visual medium is the most powerful medium of communication. You know, so as somewhere, I read it one, uh, and it was in an audio book, which says that the sound is the stepchild of film or something like that. And I was <laughs> like, this is an audio book, wow. You know, so, but that's what it is. So to understand human behavior is very important. So, um, so we're just at the point where, uh, so sync is different, where how songs are placed in movies is different. But when you're going to create content around your artist now, uh, that itself is another, uh, is another agenda. So it's definitely, it's got to be likable. It's got to synchronize with the vision for what the artists and how do they want to be portrayed. Yeah, there's a lot of experimentation that need to be done. The, these are the day, uh, one of our young artists, she's studying at Harvard. You know, she's 19 year old uh, Indian girl. And uh, so we said, how are we going to come out with the first visual? And we have a friend in New York and he said that, why don't we do uh, like a 3D video? You know, and uh, we had a limited budget but uh, tons of creativity. And he offered to go out of the way to develop this concept, which is going to be just shot in one room. So that's about ready now. And it's, uh, it'll be a novelty when it comes out. Mm -hmm. you know, it'll have its own little mm -hmm. charm. It'll help us get launched. So we're experimenting. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I think one of, the, one of the senses that we have learned to develop is common sense. Mm -hmm. You know, so like that. otherwise everything else is so like sophisticated yeah. these days that right. we actually forget where we are. I mean, yeah. that there's something called common sense. I like that. So, so Ross, when when you were talking about your company, one of the facets or tenants that you mentioned was technology. So I would love to learn a little bit about how you've used technology to propel an artist, to propel maybe a song or a movement that you've been involved in. Uh, great question. Technology has been an uh, integral part into the production process for recording and sound design and producing music. And I believe that every artist, composer, writer, producer should strive for their own sound, their own signature. And in our case, with Archipelago, it's taking sounds from our planet, recording them with something as simple as an iPhone mm. or you know a fancy high quality recorder. Mm -hmm and using technology that we all have on our Macs or our Windows machines and transform those sounds into music. Mm -hmm. uh, taking the sound of running water, granulizing that, and then putting it into Melodyne and to create chords out of it. Um, banging a bridge, maybe the Golden Gate one day for a mm -hmm. kick drum, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, immersing yourself into this beautiful, amazing planet that we live on and using this as our studio, our planet as our studio kind of bailing traditional recording you know, studios and techniques. Um, with that said, and that philosophy, um, not only just for myself, but for the artists that we have developed and worked with um, in all different areas of the country, um, in different markets, and even the well-seasoned artists that are still developing and nurturing their sound and developing and, and uh, augmenting to their path in, in their career, um, being able to provide something a little bit different has been invaluable. and the technology is there, and we have just so many tools at our fingertips, but it's also up here. 
Right. You know, uh, it's all up here and how okay. you can take a sound and rework it. And so technology, thats that would be my gut response, is just technology has allowed my team and myself and peers all around the music industry to, th if you can think it, you can make right. it nowadays. Very nice. So um, it's been great to implement that with the music. Nice. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's very fun. I think we all feel uh, more enlightened when we walked in here uh, based on all these amazing responses. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you guys. Yeah. We have to move into the Q&A session Indeed. now. Indeed. Indeed. So, so let's go ahead and take some questions for those folks that are online. Please uh, put your questions Can I ask inside the, first of the question? panel. And we have someone going around with, two people going around with a mic. Damn. So uh, feel free to... Feel free to let me know where you're at, and uh, they'll go ahead and bring the mic to you. Okay. There you go. What does the green button do Don't on the touch. microphone? That's my question. Don't press it. Don't press do it? OK. It just looks cool. It's a cough button, I think. Got it. Hi, guys. I am Alora Rivers. <laughs> I'm a singer, songwriter. and. I have kind of like two questions. Okay, so I'm combining like black girl magic because I am a black woman and I'm doing a lot of research on like the Indian culture. You know, there's a play on um, lighter Indians versus darker Indians and the black Americans is to play on that too and in the Spanish. And what I'm trying to combine is kind of like R&B and rock. And I guess my question would be, how do you guys feel about combining genres and then opening up like that type of feel? I want to bring that awareness to the music industry, you know, but doing a play with magic because I do believe that it's magic in our melanin, if that makes sense to you guys. Sounds like magic to me. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I would say do as much as that as you can um, to take different cultures, different parts of the world, different genres of music, whatever it is, if you can marry those together and make it you, Laura, right? Alore, Alore. Rivers. Ple excuse me, um, <laughs> pleasure to meet you, Alora. If you can find a way to combine all those together, then you're gonna, and if you're happy doing it, then you're on the right path, I would Thank say. Thank you. Yeah. Do it. Uh, for, um, I would think the most important word for me these days is to make it relevant. You can do whatever you want to do. You can mix whatever you want to mix, get whoever you want to get, talk about whatever you want to talk. As long as you can make it relevant and likable, it's okay. Like the word black girl magic has taken on its own. Just make it relevant. Yeah, and find the, find the community that identifies with that and, you know, make it and foster not only just you as an artist, but the other artists that want to participate in that community and that culture. And I mean, I think, and I mean, Israel could speak on this, but I'm, that's like hip, hip hop, like 101 and where the hip hop came from is the community. So just a small extension off of this answer of being relevant. Um, also a little bit of forward thinking in there too, because yeah. if you can do something that hasn't been done and also keeping it relevant and, co and uh, likable to what people already are used to. Having that fine balance is good. Thank you. I have a question for you, Asa, because you're doing a lot of, yes, yeah, you're oh. doing sounds with the earth and, uh -huh. uh, would I be able to buy you coffee? Can we talk? Okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. can talk about sound design. Okay, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Yes. Okay, so my name is E.R. Merville, and I'm here for Music Business Management. And I have a question. So me and my twin are artists, and oh. we also are like businesswomen, so we have our, um, own, our own online fashion boutique. So my question would be, should we, um, should we post, present the online boutique as artists, still artists ourselves, or also um, just put it as something different, like an, a different business? as its own brand, what would you say for an artist who also has a business side? I mean, if you're the artist and you're wearing your own brand, it seems like it makes sense to me. But I mean, if it, if it feels separate to you, then maybe it is separate. But I mean, as far as like, if it's totally way off brand, but mm -hmm. like if you're trying to, it just depends on what you want to do. I mean, at least from like my, my thinking is that if, if it fits what you guys are already doing and you're already... Do you, like wearing the fashion that you're talking about it's and um like sending out also it's just that to me makes sense i don't think Thank you me. should separate it Thank you. over there hello my name is chanel chambers i'm from chicago illinois 
I came down here to Full Sail for music production. My question to the amazing panel, first let me say, I appreciate you all giving us your time and your knowledge. Um, so that's the first. Our pleasure. Thing. Thank you for being here. Oh, yay. The question is, my personality is very, um, not necessarily aggressive, but I'm extremely opinionated. And I know in this industry, networking and communicating with others is what takes you to the best level. But I feel like I'm creatively frustrated. How do I maintain whatever creative aspect I have, but still, you know, focus on professionalism, networking, when if I connect with someone, I need something. So it's like, it kind of gives leeway to teasing. It gives leeway to, you know, um, them having a different conversation with someone who I could potentially network with in the future. So now I'm presented before I get there and my personality speaks up for itself. So how do I work on that? It sounds like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, and this is just a very quick observation, there may be something holding you back from opening up that very charming personality you have and wanting to talk to people. Um, with that said, you know, we're all, everybody in this room, we're all in the same boat. We're all equal here. So, you know, just be sure to remind yourself when you are going to talk to somebody up here about your project, they, if they are, in terms of credentials or whatever that may be, ahead of you, they all started somewhere. We all started at, you know, one place. And everybody may be in different areas of their life or in their career, but just remind yourself of that. Um, and just know that everybody will not say yes not everybody's going to say no. And sometimes you have to knock on doors and have 20 no's to get one yes to be like, hey, let's go hang out and make some music. Um, on the flip side of that, we all talked about teamwork and identifying what you're really great at. And you clearly have strengths in the creative field, so perhaps try to find somebody, if you don't know anybody already, that can balance out the administrative, managerial, you know, networking side. Everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. Um, so find people to balance that out, but also just remind yourself that, hey, you know, we're all equal here, and if someone doesn't give you the time of day, mm -hmm. they're lost or yeah. whatever. So, yeah. Um, yeah that's, a, a that's great point. If I could just chime in for one second. Sure. Wonderful. I would just wanted to say that music is the common denominator, right? So make sure that you don't walk into a situation where you have your defenses up, where you you know, maybe feel intimidated. Just keep in mind, as Ross just said, that, you know, people are here for the same reason, because they have this passion for this art that we call music. So I think as long as you walk in with that, I, and again, everyone's different, I think for the most part, you know, that's common ground. Yeah, and your opinions are part of the value that you have to identify in the other people that you would win building your team, like you were saying about shared values. So. I think that's important too. It's just, you know, it doesn't, when you have strong opinions, you're going to have people who have opinions that are very, that you're definitely not going to agree with. And then you're going to have people that you're like, you totally get me, you know. But I think you should still like separate opinions from facts and then also recognize, you know, versus being like, I think I'm great at this thing, being like, I am great at this specific thing. And this, these are, this is why. And then also in that same note, having the humbleness to it, to be like, I'm, I am, and not just being like, I think I'm not really great at this thing. I know I'm not great at this thing. And you and I share a lot of similar opinions, but I'm strong here and you're strong there. So let's meet somewhere in the middle and figure, you know, figure this out. Uh, all the way in the back here. Um, we have two questions from our YouTube viewers. The first YouTube. is Anthony. Hi, Anthony. He would like to know, do I have to move and go to college in order to get into <laughs> the music industry? Uh, the short answer is no. no but Full Sail is dope. Full, full Sail is rad, and like for me, and I'm sure all the, I mean for most people in this room, like life changing. But no, you don't need to relocate, and there's a plethora of things that you can do within your own community to learn. Yeah, find the community and get involved. Yeah. Do something. 
please. And then our second question is from Trevorius, who is an entertainment business bachelor's student. He would like to know, does it take money to manage an artist with your new startup label? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I mean, it's a, it's a good question, but yes. I mean, whether, again, whether it's your money or somebody else's money, you have to spend mm -hmm. it the same way. Smart. And kind of going back to what she said, if we're talking business, then there's always money involved in that. Because if otherwise you'll be a load on somebody, you'll be borrowing money, and that's not okay. So if it's a business, it has to make money for itself. And I also wanted to address the question regarding uh, the education, whether you have to relocate. Mm. So I'm of the opinion that uh, if, if that education is relevant to your growth, it doesn't matter where you have to go. You know, get out of this planet and learn if you have to. But uh, you have to go and seek the knowledge where it is available. And also in life, we don't have to go and figure out everything ourselves. There are some people who've been there and done that. It's better to go to a place and get accelerated so that you don't waste time in your life and figure out everything yourself. So you can use a great education program like the one we have at Full Sail and get going. You know, so if you have to move, please move. Put, put yourself in situations and environments that you can learn and grow and be with people who yes. believe in the same things that you believe in. You are so, so good at this. Makes yeah. me mad. <laughs> 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 hey guys, my name is Nico Larson. I'm a recording arts uh, degree. Thank you guys for being here, first of all. And the, it's funny, the guy online kind of asked my question, but maybe you guys can expand upon it. Um, so we graduate, right? We're like $72,000 in debt, you know, s something around, around that number. So I'm developing an artist right now. Her 70, name is Mila you're Jan. not seventy-two thousand dollars in debt. That's your first milestone. Then you better cross it really fast. Otherwise, you're wasting your time, your family's money, and get going with it. Very true. So here, here. I have an artist I'm developing. Her name is Mila Jam. Check her out. But what what would you say? I, I heard a lot about developing the team. So how would you say that you would get these people involved if you're you know start starting from the bottom basically cuz nobody wants to work for free so how would you how did you guys get started in 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 getting a team together and and like getting everything going that's my question you can get started for free let me tell you um uh, especially with startups, you have to find out all kinds of ways to get great people on board. And sometimes you won't have the money in, in the early days. So uh, you have to have a great vision. Uh, you have to have a great track record. Yes, and uh, the people around you have to feel inspired and worthy of being part of this team and that <coughs> they're about to do something great. Yes, and then with milestones, you have to achieve that. Then it's fun. Then people will not just come work for free, they'll help make you money. So you set up realistic goals and, uh, and go for it. That's know. amazing advice. Yeah. And it's about, do it. I was just gonna add to that. And I mean, like, I, and I don't necessarily think it's about working for free, but like everybody wants to work with like an incredible talent. So if you feel like you have somebody, you know, in, incredible, and again, that's subjective. So everybody's gonna be your, you're gonna, you just have, it's your job as the manager. You're managing? Um, production what? Deal. Production deal, okay, well then, it, does the person have a manager? No. Then you're the manager for right now. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, and then it's just about, you know, um, the, as far as finding the team, again, like people who, you don't necessarily need to go to like, okay, this artist is just like this one, so let me go talk to this team, it's just like, Again, looking for people who are doing things that you can't do or your artists can't already do on their own and you know, bringing, bringing them in and making sure that they feel invested no matter how big of a person they are or how small they are, they need to have that like, in feeling of an investment in the project. Um, I would also just like to reinforce the idea of don't let the dollar amount of a project sway your decision as much as you can help that. And we see this actually in more of the seasoned veterans and professionals in the industry where some of the first questions might be, how much is my artist or whomever gonna be paid? And that we haven't even told them the full detail and vision of what we're trying to do. And these are, mm -hmm. in our case, we are working a lot in international markets. And some professionals, their managers have just asked, how much is this person going to be paid? And as soon as they hear a number that may be lower than what they're expecting, they put it off to the side and they don't care. 
but what they don't realize, they might be missing a more profound opportunity that can mm -hmm. lead to a m very fruitful you know, residuals. Mm -hmm. And tapping into new territories and new networks, being able to travel around the world to do certain things. So um, I, we see this definitely more in the seasoned uh, professionals and, and guys who have been at it for a, a decade. And that's sometimes unfortunate because Yes, they might be paid 30, 40% less than what they're used to be getting, but there is a whole other world of opportunity that could come from this. And they're very good at what they do. That's why we're calling them. So we know that if they were to do it and take a chance, um, they could A, make more money in the long run, if that's the manager's main interest, mm -hmm. um, but B, just add so much to their career and to their life experiences and stories and the music they get to make. So. Um, don't let the dollar sway you, or try not to let it sway. I understand there are certain situations when push comes to sub, you got to do that, but uh, try not to let that happen too often, because it could prevent you from being involved on maybe a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And pick your chances wisely, you know? Yeah. Because you do have to keep the ship going. Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Sebastian. I am in the music business program. Can you see me? Yes. Hi. Cool. And, uh, first, thank you for coming to Full Sail. So this is my question. Which is more important for musicians' success, talent or marketability? I think like the three of you should have like different answers because I mean, you are, the three of you are involved with labels or have a label. So I want to know what do you think of this question? Both. I, like, I know it should, it should be a balance, but nowadays, what do you think is more important? Talent's a given. Work so ethic. you walk in with, you have to have talent. Like, I don't think that's negotiable. That's my perspective. Yeah. I've worked with a few yeah. artists. I think work ethic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would agree. Uh, it's, you have to have both. Um, I, there's a lot of very talented people out there, but if they don't have vision and the work ethic and perhaps be marketable, have a story, have that why, then they're just like the two million other really talented people out there. And again, so. mar marketable is this, you know, the the thinking that you you have this product, and then eventually that product is going to meet an audience. And if they, by the definition of like, is this person marketable? Um, unless you're asking me, like, is this person going to be famous to the entire world? I think that's like a totally different question. But is this person marketable to their audience that they are trying to reach? They absolutely should be because then why? Then you know, you're not. I don't think you're ready if you don't have some. If you don't have something that you feel like the audience you're trying to reach wants mm -hmm. to hear, why would you send it to them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of artist development. Yeah. It's making it marketable, making them marketable. Yeah. yeah, it's a business at the end of the day, and you got to market your product or service. You need both. Yep. Hi, my name. Oh. Hi, now. Hi. Hi, my name is Benita. I know we've been talking about like um, what you guys have done or d right now in artist development, but I also would like to know, like before you started working your career, what led you guys here? Like your first resume, your first opportunity, and like some of the some of the the downfalls of it, because that's where I'm going to have to go. And I would like to know more about your experiences. So, go for it. <laughs> so, what program are you in? And what are you looking to do? Um, everything that makes money. Everything that makes money. Okay, then you can give us a call. We like people who will think <laughs> like that. So, and have you identified any like companies that you would like to be a part of? He's here, so. <laughs> and, and and if you haven't gotten your job by the end of this gig, I mean, the, the, like they say, that's the only option. That's how we work. So if you want to go get something, you go get it. If you want to be with Atlantic, you have to figure out a way to be with Atlantic. And that is the only option, by hook or by any other method. Yeah, and um, I guess you I, can use your resume, you can use your charm, you can use your influence, but if you want to get in, you better get in. Yeah. And the, um, to also talk, to talk about things that I did, I guess like, because a lot of what I, you know, I was very fortunate to come here, a lot of what I learned by coming here was a lot of the things that I didn't want to do. So while I was interning at Atlantic, I did a lot of freelance work. I worked for um, 
I basically convinced an entire company in New York that I could redesign um, Cirque du Soleil's branding, brand ambassador program in, in Disney. I just told them. A lot of times people will be like, can you do this? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Even if I don't know how, because that's the best, that's how I learned how to swim and that's how I learn a lot of things now. My lifeguard threw me in the pool. So you meet that's him another after story this. and it's yeah. traumatic, but we'll talk about some. But anyways, um, I don't go to a lot of pools. It's not a problem in Nashville. Anyways, <laughs> I, um, I did that and I was like, man, I'm really good at this marketing thing. I like figured it out and was managing an entire team and everybody was making New York wages. They're like, this is sick. It's like, why can't Florida pay this much? It's like, they don't know how much people make in Florida. Just let them pay us what they're paying us. So right. we did that whole entire thing. And I learned that though I liked or though I was good at it, I didn't like it. And it wasn't what I wanted to do. And a lot of the classes taught me the same thing was though I would could get an A in the class or a C in some, sorry if I did for the teachers that are in here. Um, but it was just learning that I didn't like those things and it wasn't what I wanted to do. And it's all in the pursuit of finding the thing that that's the only thing you could possibly do. And for me, um, working, working at Atlantic was an opportunity that was presented to me. And then once I discovered that not only was I good at it, but I actually really liked it, I didn't let anything else get in the way. Not those five jobs that I had to do, not the homework that I had to do in between that, not the sleep that I lost. Everything that I did was focused on that and myself and my own happiness. And then the people who were around me were that much better for it, were happier. And, you know, rather than focusing on everything else around me and all the other opportunities that could be, I just focused on the one thing that I wanted and I went and did it. Uh, risk taking, you know, you have to take risks and I have slept in my car. I've brushed my teeth in Wendy's bathrooms when I was first starting out when I was living in LA. Like a chicken. Um, after college, I just was all about taking any opportunities, road trips to Atlanta, Miami. Um, I took a flight to LA, went to this conference called NAM. For those of you who don't know, it's like the biggest audio nerd out thing ever. Love it. Mm -hmm. I go every year. Um, but it was my first year. I didn't know anybody. Had maybe 50, 100 business cards. I got rid of all of them. I just went around and shook hands. And there's 10, 15,000 people in this convention center. And it was the last gentleman that I met who gave me an opportunity. And I had three different types of media to give him, either a printout PDF or playback through headphones right then and there, or a thumb drive. I mean, I was ready. I was ready to go. And he heard my music right there on the spot on the sales floor of NAM and said, I work for this prolific DJ producer. We're looking for people to help us mix and produce his album. I said, whatever it takes, I'll be here. So he said, can you be here in three days? I had a flight in three hours to come back to Orlando. So I flew back to Orlando, flew back out to LA three days later, rented a car, drove to his home, and he gave me two jobs to do within 12 hours, 24 hours, literally. And it was a Disney Tron mix for Disney, or yeah, excuse me, repeating myself. Uh, so Tron <laughs> and a Britney Spears song, and I did them both. And before that, he wanted to be social and go to In-N-Out and do all these things. I'm like, uh, pardon me, sir, but you just gave me all this work to do, but you want me to go hang out. But that's also being adaptable. Yeah. But I, I did that. I did the mixes. They were approved. And he offered me the job. And I moved in with him a month later and lived in LA for a year. So um, it's chances. You have to take chances and take risks and knock on doors. My business partner and I still walk down Sunset Boulevard to this day and we'll knock on doors, cold call, yeah. cold email. And you know, ten, after 10 years of doing this, still do it. Never. I mean, my father still does that. People we all know still do it. It's just don't be afraid to cold call and do all that good stuff. Take risks. My boss told me he, does, he doesn't want to fire me because he doesn't want to go through the process of trying to figure it all out again. So I just made myself <laughs> indispensable in that way. Just, yeah. he's, like, he's like, dang, you're doing all these things? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, I guess you're going to be around for a while. <laughs> and then you can figure it out from there. So make yourself indispensable. Yeah. Build we, value in yourself. Mm -hmm. Nice. We have another question from an online, online. viewer. Online. Uh, Crystal, who is a music business bachelor student, would like to know, what elements of your career have brought you the most stress, and how have you gone about managing that stress? Artists and music. <laughs> hand in hand. <laughs> no, I mean, go ahead. So I think every chapter has its own uh, challenges. So the idea is to be 
to have the ability to get out of something and to find a solution. Yeah, so there's a new challenge every now and then that comes by. So the fun has been to, uh, I think, to develop one's own systems to find a solution. I think so. Um, there have been challenges uh, technical, there have been challenges creative, there have been challenges with uh, the talent, with artists, and you have to find a solution. So, it's, yeah, I mean, that's the attitude we take. Uh, yeah, very similar answers. You know, every part of our careers and lives have their own adversities, and sometimes you're not dealt the best hand. Um, but if you surround yourself with just good people and stay on top of your, uh, your health and make sure you're doing things for the right reason, and just work hard and have fun, have fun. This is a fun industry, so make sure that you're having fun and you're doing things that you believe in. That will help counter the stress a little bit and just deal with it, you know? Deal with it with yeah. the best ways possible. Someone told me in a, one of the five things I was doing was show production. I worked for uh, American Audiovisual, like was a company down here. And the guy I remember was saying like, oh, we have a, you know, we have like a problem over here and a problem over there. He's like, no, 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 no problems, only challenges. And I was like, okay, great. I'll do, I'll just call problems challenges from now on. <laughs> and for me, mentally, it helps to be like, rather than looking at it as this complete adversity and this like it against me or it against the team or it against whatever. It's more like, you know, this is just a part of the business. We have challenges and we have to face them, whether they come from the artists or another business that we're working with or whatever. Um, that's, you know, that's part of it. And it's dealing with those challenges that tell you and how you deal with those challenges that kind of inform you, who you are and what your company is all about. And then, I mean, for, for me and how, what helps me deal with that stress, honestly, is like when I go to that concert or I listen to a great song, I'm just like, this is why we all do a lot of this, you know? I, uh, I took a picture at the hotel that we are staying. It had a lovely little, uh, I think there was a sign somewhere. Let me get that. Was that the hotel? At, at the hotel. They had all those cool like neon signs. Yes. Oh gosh, there's just so many pictures here. But it was a nice one, so give me a second and I'll tell you. But yes, it's not what happens, it's how you handle it. Yeah. yeah. Good one. That's, that's good. Evidence. Put that, you should put that on like <laughs> the, the background. I'm so sorry, but we have to call it. I know you all have a ton of other questions, so I encourage you to use the Full Sail app and find their faces for this event. If you click on their faces, it'll tell you everywhere else they're going to be for the rest of the week, and you can follow them around wow. and hopefully get a green, yeah. green room session with them. Social media, too. Yeah, uh, I, I knew we had tracking devices on us. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to hang out for a little bit. I know we have to clear out this room yep. for the next round, but I'm going to hang out over there where the Starbucks is or whatever, where they don't have the chocolate chip cookies currently, unfortunately. What? Uh, so we can all nerd out over there if you guys want. Nice. Let's, let's give it up for our guests. <laughs>